stage, Mrs. Samina Wazrali, Executive uh, Vice Chairman, SIPLA. Came and a very warm welcome to each one of you here today. Thank you for being part of our Yes Mom Day. It's a big day for us uh, at SIPLA Health. And this Yes Mom Day is actually a culmination of a long campaign that we carried out, which was the Yes Mom campaign. This campaign actually reached out to over 60 lakh moms across India. It, this is just the power of what it is to be a mother, actually. So I'm Samina Wazir Ali. I'm a mother of two, and I'm the executive vice chairman uh, at CIPLA. So being a mother is actually a very, very tough job. Being a working mother is even a harder job. So hopefully we can make our lives a little bit simpler by having little things in our everyday life that helps us being a better mom. And just out of my personal experience, I have two boys. Uh, one is seven, and he's sitting right there, Rayan, and the other one is 11. And my constant struggle has been about around their nutrition. So they grew up as fussy eaters. We tried to supplement everything by shoving milk down their throats, stuffing powder in milk that we felt added more supplements to them, and just worrying about you know, what they ate and how they ate and how well they were and which antibiotic they took. And sometimes we forgot the bigger picture in life that the life is about living and about enjoying and about happiness. And sometimes in the pursuit of saying no and being overprotective, we forget about those happy moments and we kind of get lost in this whole circle of life of saying no and being overprotective. That's when we went back at CIPLA. And you know, for many of you who know this, CIPLA has been around for 82 years. Uh, we're the third largest pharma company and we are very well known in the pediatric space. And we've been working with pediatricians since the last 82 years to develop drugs. But these drugs were all about bringing illness into control. And today, the focus is actually about wellness. And how do you move that spectrum from illness to wellness is where CIPLA Health comes in. And we've been working actually on this product for the last two years. And with scientists, uh, with our nutritionists, with our panel of doctors, and with kids and mothers. I think kids and mothers are the most important people in this entire diagram because they are the ones who are gonna take the product, they are the ones who have to accept it, like the taste, like the format. Doctors have to tell us that they have the 100% RDA, and nutritionists have to tell us that they bring all the supplements that are needed for kids. So this has been a two-year journey, actually, of working together and creating this product, and I'm so happy that today we can launch CIPLA Kids, um, CIPLA Active Kids Immuno Boosters here today, and this is insurance for our kids. And I hope that from today, no mum will have to say no, and every mum sitting here today can be a yes mum. So thank you so much for being here today with us, and I hope you enjoy the product and take it back into your homes, your communities, and your friends, and we can make an entire movement in India out of yes mom and about building a generation of healthy and happy kids for tomorrow. So thank you very much for being here today. together as today we launch the active kids immuno booster but with a countdown from everyone
only supposed to come here and, you know, help fight that germ, eliminate that germ. But he has actually tried the Active Kids Immuno Booster. So he wants to say something. What would you like to say, Veer? Active Kids Immuno Boosters makes me super strong. Yeah, it's given him a lot super of energy, strong. that's for sure. <laughs> Well, uh, Mandala, it's great to have you here as part of the Yes Mom Day and for the launch of Active Kids Immuno Boosters. So my first question to you is going to be, are you a Yes Mom? Well, let me tell you, I used to be the bad cop. I used to be a no mom. There used to be, no Veer, don't do this. No Veer, don't do that. For a while, Veer actually thought his name was No Veer. But, <laughs> but of late, I have become a Yes Mom. And I've been saying yes to a lot of things. Discipline aside, discipline is very important. Moms have to say no, don't you agree? When it comes to discipline, and moms are the ones who are the bad cop as far as that is concerned. But as far as the concerns that we have as moms uh, go, one should let your child go free a little bit. You know, be the best version of themselves they can be. Let them free a little bit. And in that respect, I have become a yes mom. That's for sure. So, uh, also, Mandara, I just heard you saying that uh, we doesn't really appreciate eating junk food. So, no, he doesn't actually. You know, we go to a lovely school, and uh, they've they've you know taught the kids well as to what junk food is. Uh -huh. We likes to follow rules, it seems. So, every time I bring a pizza forward, he's like, uh, "Mom, that's junk food. I won't eat it." Whoa. <laughs> so he's a dal chawal man. <laughs> he has dal chawal spinach and he gets his protein from non-vegetarian food and chicken fish so he eats healthy generally speaking one thing i can't get him to eat and i will say that in the panel discussion and speak to the doctors as well about it i can't get him to eat fruits mm. oh yeah so but uh we ma'am we request you to please take your seat yes. we have a pictures after the panel discussion. So that's wonderful. Uh, we'll discuss about it more. When uh, every mom wants to be a yes mom to their child desires, but without being afraid of their child's health, how can they become a yes mom? To discuss this, we would like to call upon three amazing women who are experts in their own field to share their expertise on the need of becoming yes mom and to discuss a little about immunity. Ladies and gentlemen, can we please put our hands together and help me welcome on stage Dr. Sapna Zarwal, who is a psychologist from Delhi with over 16 years of experience. Next, we'd like to call upon Dr. Deepa Pandarkar, who is been working for 19 years as a pediatrician. Can we please put our hands together for Dr. Deepa? <clears throat> Dr. Neeti Desai, who is celebrated nutritionist and dietitian. Can we please have Dr. Neeti on stage? Can we please put in a round of applause for her? Come on. So, uh, what has made you yes, mom? Were you worried about we's health and immunity earlier? What changes have you seen after adopting the new approach that is the yes challenge approach? Well, I think every mother is concerned about a child's immunity right from when they are born. Because, uh, you know, you want to breastfeed because that means immunity. You want your child to be strong. So, I breastfed for a long time for almost 11 months. So immunity was a, a concern, and it's a concern, I suppose, for every single mom. And um, at every age and stage, you're concerned about, about immunity. All through the twos, uh, you know, he would catch every infection that was going around, and I'd say, you know, I breastfed for so long. Why, why, why is he still falling sick? But at the end of the day, as a mom, you should also know that when he's falling sick, he's building his own immunity up. 
I mean, you can't keep your child also in a sterile environment where, uh, you know, they're not exposed to anything because uh, you, I mean, scraping knees, getting a fever now and then is all a part of growing up. Am I right? I, I'm not speaking as any expert here, but I'm just saying as a mom, you're concerned about immunity, you're concerned about your child falling ill. And um, at times I used to say, no, Veer, you shouldn't do this. You shouldn't go into the swimming pool. You shouldn't uh, go and play. The weather's turned. It might be too cold for you. But of late, I've, I have, as I said a little while ago, adopted this yes mom approach. And there was this lovely social media campaign started by, by Sipla about um, how it's important to become a yes mom because it, it, uh, it's about, you know, letting your child be, letting your child free, letting your child develop his personality, his or her personality, you know. So uh, I have become a yes mom and um, I must share this with you. When I was a no mom, um, we, used to, the, we used to always call me boss girl. He used to sit on the seat next to me and says, Mama, you're tough. You're the boss girl. <laughs> and of late, now, since I've become a yes mom, he's started saying to me, uh, Mama, you're my best friend. And I think that it really feels that every single day, he says it to me at least twice a day. He plays a song for me on the radio every morning, uh, on, on, the, you know, on the music every morning, uh, which is called, You've Got a Friend in Me. So <laughs> he's, he started looking, uh, looking to me as a friend as well now. So it's very important to have taken on this yes mom approach. Having said that, discipline wise, we still have to say no. Right moms? Okay, uh, so my next question is for Dr. Sapna. So uh, the question is um, when moms, you know, tend to say no, it's of course uh, regarding the discipline, ki nahi aapkoi, nahi karna hai, you shouldn't be doing this, you shouldn't be doing that. No, no, no. What impact do you think that has, the word no has on the child? Okay, uh, first of all, uh, you know, a study says that a mom says on an average 400 times no to a child. And imagine a child listening that no, 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 no every time. In a day. In a day. In a day, imagine. <laughs> and you don't even realize, you know, as mothers. And then when it comes to impact of no, yes, it's a bigger impact. And um, as we all know about it, the father of psychology also says that everything lies in the childhood. Whatever impact, it impacts the personality as well in the longer run. So when we are saying no, what we are trying to do is we are trying to give everything in a frame, you know, and we are uh, closing all the imagination and thinking of the child. So we are taking away all the decision making from the child. And over a time, there are, everybody has their own personality. Some children would come up with, okay, they might not listen to your no and would know that, okay, they have to contradict. But most of the children, because they are very small, when you are saying no to them, they will listen and they will have to. Do they have any other choice, mothers? No, they don't have. So what happens is, in the longer run, it affects the personality. So when we are saying no, that's the reason it has to be put it in a very subtle manner. The same thing can be said or giving choices that, okay, would you like to have this, 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 rather than saying that, okay, you want to have that? Or if a child is asking for a candy, you can say, okay, he wants to have candy again and again, repeating, 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 and you're saying, no, you cannot have. Rather than saying that, you may say that, okay, I can allow you, allow you whatever this, this, this after this period, but can you have this and then maybe this? So the child feels powered, empowered, you know, so that makes a lot of difference. And that empowerment gives him that self-confidence. And we get everything from our parents, you know, when it comes from home. The knowledge is not only coming from the school, it's also coming from home. And especially in these years, you know, when they are junior school students, you know, or children, it really matters to them. So saying no really going to impact their psychological issues and which would, you know, the, it, it's like a ne negative impact and the negativity which is coming on to them. So there are sort of many children who would even uh, start saying no for everything themselves also, for the other things where they should actually be saying yes. So that's the importance of no, wherein we have to be very, very carefully using this yes and no balance has to be there. So, um, like we were talking about Veer, uh, Veer knows how to differentiate between a junk food. Okay, this is junk food and this is something very healthy that, uh, you know, I need to eat. So, nowadays even schools have started practicing this, okay, you need to get this for your lunch or for your breakfast. We, as uh, moms, like uh, Mandara ma'am, um, she said that Veer uh, isn't, you know, fond of fruits. 
so do do you think how how do we you know inculcate that okay you you need to eat this you need to eat that and not use the word no 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 see when it comes to again giving choices you just have to tell the child and even tell him that okay this if you're going to eat fruits or whatever you want the child to eat give him in smaller portion it's like making him in a habit if one day full meal you want him to have or it's only fruit salad or maybe one fruit you say okay you have to have he'll say no big no you say okay have one bite of this one fruit and maybe something else i'm going to say you want apples or oranges <laughs> <laughs> no. that's what i'm going to do no. no because he's going to get he's yes. going to get a cho choice between two <laughs> we <laughs> have to give choice of when we say choice is choice means something has to be of his choice also obviously it's like basically what are we trying to do we are trying to do bargaining especially kids of these days they have all logics for each and everything you say have fruits why should i have fruit because you will become healthy why can't i be healthy by eating this i'm not looking sick i'm fine why you're telling me to eat this so they have all the logic so that's where bargaining only works nothing else also very popular characters work for example yes. the only way i can get my son to eat spinach and now he eats it and likes it yeah. is because of popeye, popeye. <laughs> and you know the kind of muscles that popeye has he wants them some day so that's also a helpful yes. <laughs> method of getting them to eat stuff they don't want to eat now we got to find some character that eats apples also <laughs> also in schools you know they have these systems these days where in um, not only earlier it used to be only in pre primary sections where in they had fruit day red day this day now they have started it with junior school also reason being is this the concern for mothers becoming more for the fruits or vegetables so they have this it's compulsory everybody has to bring that thing and everybody is going to eat the whole class is going to eat it so maybe bring it together they yes they adapt that okay i'm going to eat this i'm going to eat that right yeah i just wanted to add to this uh you know the, our, the common <coughs> adage that goes an apple a day <coughs> sorry keeps the doctor away it it doesn't have to be an apple it could be any fruit and the important thing is that we need a variety so we've always been telling our kids that you should eat your greens uh it doesn't have to be the greens it has to be the reds and the yellows and the purples also so if the kids may not have 20 fruits but even if they like three or four fruits i think you are doing a great job doesn't have to be it. there is no single fruit which is like an insurance the more variety a child has or we all have you going to get a huge complement of different uh, nutrients so yeah you have a wide wide uh, variety to choose from just one sentence do respect the child's taste buds do respect it Okay uh so my next question is for Dr Deepa Okay um we've been talking about immunity so we'd love to know your experience about how immunity is important and over years and years of practice how many cases do you actually face when moms you know actually come to you talking about are mere bachche ki immunity bahut kam hai give me a solution for that we'd love to know your experience over it Ah uh, yeah Yes, talking about immunity, I think this is one question which almost every alternate mom asks me. How do I increase my child's immunity? So first and foremost, I would like you to understand in simple terms what is immunity? Immunity is immunity is a fine balance which our body has which distinguishes between something which is mine and something which is foreign. So this immune system in our body, if any thing which is coming into our body immune system recognizes whether this is okay for me or this is not okay for me this is the function of immune system and this is what we mean by immunity that means whenever we have an infectious uh, organism like a virus or a bacteria or some pollutant or some chemical pesticide or anything of this matter which is entering into our system in either way either we are inhaling it through our breath or we are eating it our body recognizes this as foreign it is something which should not be in my system and our body starts reacting this is our immune system which is an excellent system to keep away from all these infectious bacteria viruses and so on that is the reason immune system is so important that is the reason a immune a child with a good immunity does not fall sick because they are rejecting 
It fact fever, which we are all as mothers scared of. Fever, 102, 104. Fever is a very healthy sign. It means your immune system is functioning optimally. That means my, uh, my body is fighting that particular bacteria and in the bargain, the chemicals which are released to throw off that foreign protein is what triggers the high temperature. And then definitely lets us also know that there is something going on in our body. And then we as doctors decide whether our body's immune system is enough to take care of it or we need to give some help in the form of antibiotics or antivirals. So this is in short, what is immunity? Now to maintain this immune system, we have this immunity is basically done by our white blood cells. We have WBCs, white blood cells in our body. And to help all these immune cells to function, vitamins and nutrients have a very, very important role. Some vitamins like vitamin A, vitamin C and D are directly linked with immunity. They directly help in improving the immune system. So uh, vitamin C is, helps in healing of cuts, wounds, it prevents colds, coughs. I'm sure you all have read and heard about it. So it's, these vitamins are directly linked to immunity. The other vitamins in the form of B complex, they are indirectly related in the sense the B complex vitamins help in certain chemical reactions which occur in the body, which we call as metabolism. So these B complex are a part of some chemicals which help in these reactions and thereby help the immune system. To talk about some trace elements like iron and zinc and the other trace elements which are of which the most two most important and the uh, in the maximum concentration available in our body is iron and zinc. Again, these are directly iron is directly related to red blood cells, which helps in carrying the oxygen to all the parts of our body. So a deficiency in iron, you can imagine there is less oxygen going throughout our body and all our systems are performing suboptimally. So a child is not at his best if he has an iron deficiency. And similarly in zinc deficiency, which is there, zinc is present in each and every cell in our body. So zinc is in maximum requirement during stages of growth. That means in the newborn period, in the childhood, in adolescence and in pregnancy. So these trace elements and vitamins have a very important role to bring about the functioning of our immune system. Wow, that was very well said. So my next question is for Dr. Niti. Um, so we'd love to know what are the key nutrients for building immunity? And do you really think that products or, um, or uh, supplements like Active Kids Immuno Boosters play an important role in building immunity? Right, so uh, taking on uh, from what do uh, Dr. Deepa said, uh, Vitamins, minerals, some of them especially are extremely important. Besides that, protein is also very important for the immune function to be at its best. And we as Indians, uh, basically our protein intake is not optimum. Even if we call ourselves non-vegetarians, uh, you know, you eat twice a week, once a week, and you call yourself <coughs> non-vegetarian. So the protein is something one needs to look into, uh, even when we talk about kids. Also, don't make that glass of milk in the morning, uh, dining table uh, water, like a war zone. That glass of milk is important, but it's not the be all, all and end all. You can push that glass of milk maybe in the afternoon when you are more relaxed, the child is more relaxed. In the morning, even if he has a fruit smoothie, uh, a yogurt-based drink, or even he has cheese, uh, it, it will do the same job. It gets the same protein, it gets, the child gets the same calcium. So one needs to be a little more flexible, maybe more imaginative. Uh, and when it, nothing seems to work, the child is a fussy eater, and you have to allow the child to grow up when you know, they, on their own, become more adventurous. Maybe the nutrition supplements, uh, they can be of great help. They can definitely fill in the gaps, which we are trying very hard to fill. In the bargain, um, as I said, making dining tables more like battlefields, uh, spoiling our moods, spoiling the child, children's mood, and then leading to other things where, you know, I've had a patient, uh, a child and a mom. The mom was very happy that she said, you know, my child comes home and her dabba is empty. So he is having everything in the school. Okay. When we kind of probe into it, the child is bartering away his healthy dabba for that <laughs> pack of biscuits. Okay. 
And in another case, he was emptying the uh, dabba in the school dustbin because he wanted to show the mother that my dabba is empty, I've finished it all. So in trying to, uh, doing, trying to do our job best, I think we are also perhaps creating some larger problems. So if we have certain products which can fill in the gaps, maybe we can have a, a very happy kind of relationship, as Mandira said, and a happy childhood.